Hey, how are you doing? My name is Neil Vitalia, and I have a website called neilian.com about physics. One time a friend of mine asked me how to work a problem that involved a geosynchronous satellite and finding the velocity of it. And what a geosynchronous satellite is, is a satellite that's going around the planet and it's moving at the same rate as the planet. So if the planet is rotating like this, the satellite above the Earth is rotating at the same rate. So what that enables you to do is have the satellite that stays over a certain spot on the Earth, which is useful for certain applications. And mathematically what that means is that the satellite has the same period, the same time for one complete cycle that the planet has, which is one day. And when we're working the problem, we want to convert that period, the one day, to the SI units, to seconds. So that's going to be one of the first steps. And there are a few equations that we're going to use. So I'm going to go through the problem. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. One equation related to velocity is that the velocity is equal to a distance divided by a time. The SI units for distance are going to be meters. The SI units for time are going to be seconds. And if we have the satellite traveling in a circle, it's going to be traveling in a circular path, which can be defined by the circumference of a circle, which is given by 2 times pi times the radius, lowercase r. And if we divide that by the period, which we use the letter capital T to uh, denote, then we're going to have this equation 2 times pi times the radius divided by capital T, which is going to be the same as the distance divided by the time. To find the period of the satellite, which we write as the variable capital T, it's going to be the time that it takes to rotate around the planet. It's going to be the same as the time that the planet takes to rotate around, because again, they're traveling at the same rate. We're going to take this one day, which we know it takes the planet to rotate around once, and we're going to convert it to seconds. To convert from one day to seconds, we basically take the units and we convert along different steps. So one day, we multiply by 24 hours in one day. We multiply that by 60 minutes in one hour. Then we multiply that by 60 seconds in each minute. And if we multiply 24 by 60 by 60, the number is going to be 86,400, and then the units are going to be seconds. The equation that describes the force due to gravitation between two objects is going to be the universal gravitational constant, which is capital G multiplied by the mass of one of the objects, multiplied by the mass of another object, divided by the radius squared. In the case of the Earth and a satellite, we're going to use capital M for the mass of the Earth and lowercase m for the mass of the satellite. And R is going to be the distance between the center of gravity of the planet and the satellite. Since there's more than one force in this problem, I'm going to use subscripts to keep track of what we're talking about. So, for example, I would use F sub G to describe the force due to gravity. I'd use F sub C to describe the force related to the centripetal acceleration, something that's moving in a circle. It's going to tend to move away. If you've swung an object around, you'll know if it's connected to a string, you'll notice that it's going to try and go away from the string. It's being pulled away, it seems like. What ends up happening is you've got the Earth and you've got the satellite above it. And we've got two forces in play. We've got the gravitation pulling the satellite towards the Earth, and we've got the centripetal acceleration. As it's moving in a circle, it's going to tend to move away from the planet. If we want to get a constant altitude, if we want this thing to work how it's supposed to work, it's going to need to have those two forces actually cancel out. So the force downward and the force upward are going to have to be equal and opposite. So they're equal and opposite, we can bring that into the mathematical expressions, and it's going to allow us to solve for the velocity, and we can solve for the altitude if we wanted to. 